Today, we will build something simple from scratch using Framer. And through the process of this, we will understand the basic workflow that we want to take, as well as we will highlight some of the features that color Framer Web. So let's get started. I always start with an F, which allows me to create a frame. And this could be any size. And I'm going to right click and I'll quickly replace this with I have all these different options, but I'm just going to go straight to Unsplash, which gives me a random image right here. Maybe add some radius, maybe like 24. Yeah, okay. There we go. Right, let's redo. So we have the image. Let's create a stack window right here. It allows me to just stack components. So I'm going to hold Option and drag it and drag it in here. And now you can see that the image has been placed. And I could do it again, hold option and create a duplicate. And as I do this, you can see that it's this little container is recognizing that I'm creating duplicates and trying to calculate the spacing in between. So maybe one more, there we go. So I have this stacked images. And what's cool about stack is that it automatically sets the padding, select the stack frame, and I can go to, you know, for instance, distribute. I can do a space between. I can do center. There's different ways to set the paddings. I can even just drag this to change the padding in between. Or I can make this horizontal, even though this frame is vertically long, so I can't really see it unless I stretch it. Um, but let's keep it vertical today. Oh, I can even like drag and move it, right? That's pretty cool. Okay, anyways, this is my vertically stacked image, and this is just the content. So let's create a viewport. Okay, so this viewport is for my smartphone or something, right? And you know, you technically you can go from here, go to the device and change, you know, set it to exact resolution. But for the sake of devil, I'm not going to do this. I want to put this stacked image inside this frame, but instead of just put, placing it in here, I'm going to use this scroll to set some section where I want the images to render. And actually, I can make this so that it touches all the way to the edge. And this is my scroll and I'm going to click this ball and attach it to stack. Now what's happening is I have this fixed window. For instance, I can make this really small and select this frame, this preview. See within this little window, I'm able to scroll through the entire content that's inside the stack, right? Just set this little and maybe I'll create like a header component here, right? And actually I'm going to take this out and I am going to create a duplicate and make this a footer. I'm going to rename it footer, rename this guy header. And you know, I made this frame inside a frame so it's automatically blue. So I'm going to bring it back to white, add a little drop shadow. And this guy, maybe I'll make it black and I'll make the transparency a little low. Okay, and make it a little dead, something like that. Maybe I want to manage this component later. Maybe it's reusable in different pages. So I'm going to hit Command K to componentize these, right? That way, there's a master, there's a concept of master, which holds the definite, true definition of that component. Otherwise, uh, by holding Option and drag, like how I did to create a clone, I can put the clone in here and see if you can match this width. So that's my clone right there, right? But while I have this clone right here, I'm still able to come back here and add maybe like a title, like photo gallery. And I'll pump this up a little bit, and make it bold, right? And I'll set this to be like 24 from the left. Actually, let's make it a little bigger. Maybe like 56 from the left. Top left is, you know, top bottom, same padding. That's good. So there's my heading. There's my footer. Let's play something inside of footer. Just hit insert. Uh, input box. Okay, this is our framer's default library component. Uh, that comes straight out of the box. There it is. You can even make this a little bigger. See that I set a pretty big frame right here, which is okay. I have my input box here, and let's insert a checkbox as well. Checkbox, tiny. Make it bigger right here, and here maybe I'll put a label that says I agree to everything. <laughs> Sounds a little sketchy, but that's okay. Select this guy together. You know, in Framer, there's no sense of grouping, so I hit Command G, nothing will happen. But instead, I can hit Command return that will add additional frame to wrap the selected components so now this thing together is inside a single frame and you know i can maybe extend this so that both sides has like the same maybe i'll put 64 64 here and this component as well i want a 64 from the edge it's good and here's my footer i'm going to hold option and drag it to create a clone place inside here set the padding zero zero and zero 
great. Maybe I'll make this guy white so that it stands out more. Okay. So now if I just quickly look at it, let's just extend this up here. Let's look at the viewport. I'll just call this viewport. Okay. Let's look at the viewport and open the preview. As you can see, I can scroll through the contents I had in this little window. I have my header and I have my input box that actually works. I can start typing things in. Let's see. And I can say check, uncheck. So everything is working, right? Now, finally, I will, just for the sake of it, I'm gonna create a button now and I'll place it inside here. And what I could do is I could hit insert and I can just start typing button. And there will be a button, right? And I can just place it in here. And you know, this button also is interactive. If I take a look, see? But instead of doing that, I'm actually going to create my own button this time. So maybe I'll set the same width here. Give a little nice pop color, right? And set the radius to something like 24 and put a label inside that says submit. And this will be center aligned. And it will be bigger and, and maybe bold. And the color will be white. I'm gonna place this right in the center. And now it's automatically locked to the center. So even if I change the size of this, it will automatically always stay in the center. Which is great. I'm gonna call this button. Okay, and I'm gonna hit Command K to make it into a component. Drag and drop, change size maybe. Um, I'll place it here, right? Oops, not you, this whole thing. Let's actually make this a little bigger. And maybe because I want a little more space down here. Okay, now I'm going to add some interactions to this button. If I take a look at it now, this is just a static button. Without even knowing code, I'm actually able to add interactions here by selecting that component and going to the right panel and look for overrides and I can just click plus. So override is, is like a little patch basically that I can create and add to this component so that it behaves in certain ways. If you don't see the override panel on the right, you could go to the top left menu and hit code, so go to code and select this create override, which basically does the same thing. So now that I added an override, let's select an example. Why not, right? Uh, let's take a look at what example exists. All right, let's check hover. Okay, if I hover it, as you can see, it comes with this nice interaction. This is a little too much of an overkill, and I want to change this because this is not what I want. And even if you don't know coding, actually, you can uh, configure this to a certain level. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take a look at the code by hitting this edit code. So now this is the example code. Just to kind of give you a breakdown of what's happening here, uh, this very top line is allowing everything else below to be registered inside this override section. And the, the options we had in the dropdown were hover, draggable, rotate, flip input, output, right? Let's take a look at it again. See all these options are basically the list of functions that are created here. This, this, right, and everything else below. Um, so we are going to use this hover option. And that's what it's doing right now. It's scale by 0.8%. That's what it's doing. And let's delete everything else because we don't need it. And let's even delete this section up here. The only thing we need it really is this very top line because we want to make sure this code snippet works inside of override. Okay, let's change this to maybe scale to one, 0.03 or something like that. Something subtle. Okay. Uh, okay. Maybe that's too much. Let's do like a 0 0.1.1. .1. Let's see. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, it's kind of doing it a little bit, right? And you know what? I'm going to select this footer so that I can actually see better. See? Okay. That's that's quite a big jump. So again, I'm going to go 1.05 or something. Okay. That's more subtle, right? And in addition to that, you know, I can actually uh, set comma and do background light blue or something and see what happens. Boop. It's simple as this, you know, there's a quick override called while hover. And in addition to this, let's add pressed state, which will be while tap. Okay. You have to write while tap. And same thing. Let's set a scale. Just copy the same thing as above, except let's this time make it one. Let's bring it back to 100% if I click it. See? And then let's change the background to be black or something stands out. Simple as that. Put a here and let's try it. Click. See? As simple as that. What's working? So let's go back to the layer. Now we have a button that is fully in our view, right? Place it inside the footer. Go to the viewport. Yes, everything is working. Let's try opening up a prototype. And here it is.
it is, right? And you can even just open up this QR code and view it on your phone and you can see it too. And I can type in here, obviously the text is too small, um, but you know, you could create your own input component or adjust the size, etc. But yeah, these checkboxes are working, right? So we have an interactive button, checkbox, everything is interactive. So that's our little prototype. So to go back to the canvas, I think uh, it's worth mentioning that you can always start from small items and scale to bigger uh, organisms, or you can start by having a viewport and throwing things in here. It doesn't work, it doesn't matter. But it's always nice to create components if it's something that you might be reusing or something that you wanna manage separately. So those components will be created separately. That's kind of the general workflow. Hope this was helpful and if you have any questions please comment and otherwise uh, thank you for watching and have a good day and stay safe. Bye bye.